Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm Artem Pavlenko, and I'm author of uh, Mapnik. Uh, I assume everybody know what Mapnik is and how it fits into OSM. Uh, well, just remind you anyway. Uh, just following up on the uh, previous talk, uh, Mapnik is uh, used in a tile ser uh, service. Uh, Basically, more tile that Grant was talking about using Mapnik to actually render maps, apply different styles and render maps. Um, so I hope you not came here to for the secrets for, uh, of Mapnik, uh, <laughs> uh, because the, there, aren't, there are no secrets. Uh, well, come on, it's open. It, well, it's open source, right? Uh, so it's open. It's free. You can download it from GitHub. You can fork it. You can do whatever you like. Uh, as far as we follow license, obviously, yeah. Uh, so instead, rather talking about secrets, uh, what I want to talk about uh, is some myths and some tips, uh, some tricks. Um, I'd like to talk about how Matnik and OSM developed together, what's the relationship, some bit of history. Uh, but really, really, I want to talk about is this one. Uh, it's about my ho hobby project, okay? Uh, but bear with me. So, so some myths, uh, or maybe rather some questions I, I keep I getting asked at the conference over beer. Uh, so here's the first one. Um, people assume somehow that Mapnik was developed primarily f as an OSM renderer, so it's been developed for to render OSM data. And do you think do people think it's true or not? I don't know. No, yeah, correct. <laughs> nah, it's not true. Uh, uh, but I'd like to make a couple of points. Uh, it's Mapnik benefits, uh, keep benefits and keep, uh, still benefits tremendously from uh, OSM community because it's been running uh, as a renderer for pretty much from 2006. Uh, so it's a very good relationship. Well, we're getting some bugs reports and people complain that's good. Uh, but really, Mapnik's strength is in being a rend render which is data and style agnostic. Uh, so you can fit any data into Mapnik. You can apply your styles. It doesn't have to be OSM. Uh, uh, so, okay, so, so Mapnik and OSM are pretty much the same uh, age. Uh, the project started around the same time. Um, just to collaborate, that, I just uh, quickly go th through some facts. Uh, so Mapnik started about 2004-2005, like OpenStreetMap. Um, it was inspired by lack of tools to do beautiful maps, some cool maps. Uh, and I think at the, at the time Google Maps came along, and uh, I it kind of triggered me to get involved into into map rendering. Uh, this is a fact, maybe not. Many people know, but Mapnik, the first Mapnik actually was Java based. Uh, well, it was actually Mapnik, but it was pre Mapnik. And I'm still, got, uh, still have the source somewhere, but I'm, I'm not going to publish it, I think. <laughs> in fact, I stopped programming in Java. I never program, I don't do Java anymore. Uh, so, so, how did Mapnik OSM came together? What's happened? Uh, well, uh, when I developed Mapnik to the stage, then when it could display maps, uh, I was looking for some data. And because I'm based in UK, I was well. I thought I was looking for some UK-based JS data. Uh, so uh, I think I've written an email to Ordnance Survey and say, well, can I can I use your data? Well, I'm, I'm a developer. I want to. I can render your master map. It would, would look nice. And uh, so I got an email back from some kind of salesman with a list of options I can try to use, which is like per user payments or whatever. Basically asking for money, and so I wasn't really impressed. Uh, at the same time, uh, there was a UK geospatial mashup, which is uh, OSS Ordinary Survey, by the way, that's, which has been organized by Ordinary Survey. And that's happened in October 2006. Uh, and I thought, well, I should go there, maybe just f talk face to face with them, maybe get better answers, maybe some, get some data. Uh, pretty much at the same time, I was looking uh, 
at the OpenStreetMap project. Uh, but it, it's kind of, I like the idea. I went to the website, I, re I read all the, it looked great. It's contributor based, uh, wiki style, crowdsourcing, some free data we can do and render. Excellent. Uh, but it di didn't work for me because I was trying to use, kind of get the map to, di to display, but it, it didn't work. I think at the time the map was down or something. Um, so anyway, so I, I went to uh, Southampton. Uh, that's where the ordinary store used to be. I met those two shifty looking guys there. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, just to give, to give you a little bit more co context for that. Uh, this is how the OpenStreetMap looked, the sleepy map looked before. So not particularly impressive. And so when I saw that first time, I thought, wow, well, no, well, I think we, we can do better than that. <laughs> Uh, that, that's 2006, right? Uh, this is San Francisco. It's a very rare map, actually, but by the way. It's very difficult to find. Uh, that's San Francisco, 2006. Again, it's, well, we've got some streets, I think, from Tiger. No, no idea where that date came from, but uh, not, not beautiful. Uh, so I came, I, met, uh, I came just to Steve Coast and said, well, look, uh, I could do better maps than that. Uh, and Steve Coast, being Steve Coast, he just said, well, why don't you just go come up with a good map and we'll talk about it or something. Uh, so I went away, and a uh, weekend later, uh, and very hot laptop, uh, I came up with that. And uh, the tele that's the first rendering by Mapnik of OpenStreetMap data, which is not particularly impressive either. But at the time, that was a big step, right? Um, and I think I managed to render the whole planet uh, over a weekend, yeah? <laughs> uh, it's, it's uh, well, the planet OSM at the time was only 300 megabytes, and the conversion of data from OSM to PG SQL took about half an hour. Yes. For those people who kn know how it works now, it's, it's, you know, it's a different world now. This is just to show, this is kind of the same data, this is how it, the OpenStreetMap looks now. Well, in fact, you can see lots of resemblance. It's pretty much the same colors, a little bit different, but a little, li little bit better. There's more details and a bit more professional. So no, Mapnik wasn't developed as an OSM renderer, uh, and for good, reason, for good reasons, uh, because as a developer, I believe to be able to be data agnostic and style agnostic is a, is a strength, not a weakness. Uh, but Mapnik OSM, we kind of, we are friends. <laughs> uh, so another myth is, is that mapping is scary. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, like, that's scary, right? <laughs> <laughs> mapping would eat your baby, so you know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a big appliance, and it's <laughs> it takes ages to compile, and, uh, and it's, not, it's not for everyone. Uh, do people think it's true? Is mapping scary? Yeah. <laughs> well. Well, I, I think it's, there's some truth in that. I think it is. <laughs> uh, well, it's a C++ library, right? It's, uh, and it's, it's, it's for developers. It's not for users. It's not for end users. So. Uh, but anyway, so in this talk, I, tr I will try to make it uh, persuade you that maybe mapping is not that scary after all. Yeah? <laughs> uh, so, okay, so a couple tips, maybe not very obvious, uh, and tips that not, doesn't require a pre uh, do anything drastic, like d writing a code or anything like that, that might help for people who want to run Mapnik uh, as, a, as a renderer. Uh, slow compilation time. Quite often people complain that it takes ages to compile Mapnik. Uh, well, that's true, that's C++. Uh, so here, pro, pro tip for you. you choose a compiler carefully, huh? which basically, for me, translates use a clang. Yeah? <laughs> If you really want to use a GCC, or at least use the latest version, right? Something like 4.7. If you don't try to use a 4.1 or something. Um, also, pretty much all personal computers these days got a multiple cores. And so do you use those cores to speed up compilation? So on my uh, laptop, on this laptop, uh, it takes five minutes to compile Mapnik. Like all plugins, all tests, everything. Which is not that, really that bad, right? Uh, so not too bad, really. Uh, now, if you want to build a better performance kind of on the cheap, uh, this is another tip, pro tip for you. 
compile in C++ 11 mode. Uh, um, for those not familiar, C++ had a big makeover recently. It's been you know, upgraded to C11 standard. Uh, basically, if you just compile boost libraries and Matnik with this C++ 11, in, in C++ 11 mode, you get some speed ups. Not, gr not big speed ups, but you, you will run a bit faster. Uh, but also check out, there's a work started recently, there's a branch, Matnik C++11 branch, which is uh, specifically t uh, aimed at moving to C++11 and using the new features, and we'll make Matnik much faster. Uh, so, yeah, use Clang, use uh, alternative C++ runtime implementations, pass those flags, and, and check out C++11 Matnik branch, if you developer and you're interested in that. Uh, here another one, uh, pro tip, uh, choose your malloc. Well, malloc is a memory allocator, it's, it's a kind of basic uh, uh, s utility that's used in, in the compiled languages like C or C++. Uh, but there's a different malloc, there's a, there's a malloc, there's a TC malloc, there's a J malloc, different, different mallocs. So if you, in, in concurrent rendering, it's J malloc, seems to be showing the age, and, uh, but there's no kind of hard rule. I think it's a try for yourself, see what works better for you. But uh, we, we found that J Malik is works better for us. Uh, you can, it's, it's quite easy to use. You don't have to recompile anything. You just uh, pre-roll these libraries, and uh, before anything else, they take over. So your, your program would use J Malik. Uh, and if, all fails for you. There's another pro tip. You can use a tile mill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, but better still, you can use a tile mill too. And uh, okay, at this point, I just want to plug uh, the talk by Dan Sprigmeier a bit later because he will show you uh, tile mill two and vector tile rendering, and you'll be impressed oh, when you see the performance. Uh, I actually want to talk about my the third point. It's about my hobby project. Uh, so we all, all miss debunked. We got some pro two tips. So let's put this to the real world use. Um, so everybody heard about Raspberry Pi. That's like credit sized, uh, credit card sized computer, uh, cheap, about thirty dollars, thirty pounds in UK. Uh, so I just decided, well, see how Mapnik would perform and Salmi would perform on a Raspberry Pi. So. <laughs> So this is how it looks like, it's like Raspberry Tile, I call it. And uh, I claim it's the world's smallest tile server, okay? <laughs> uh, so here's my setup. It's, uh, you can, there's a different distribution of Linux you can run on Raspberry Pi. I went for Arch Linux because it was less bloated. I, I, I never tried it before, so I thought, well, we learned something. Uh, so what I did, I just cross-compiled Mapnik using the cross tool and G tool. Uh, it's quite easy, it's a tool that lets you build a tool chain to compile for just cross-compile. Uh, again, you Google and you find lots of uh, blogs about how to do it. And, and then I just installed TileMill. And what I did is just pretty much just up get Node.js and clone this TileMill and then npm install. It took a while, but like two coffees, maybe three coffees. But it's, uh, at the end, it worked. <laughs> uh, but uh, it wasn't really fast enough, right? Uh, so this another pro tip, pro, uh, pro tip is to look into, sometimes, sometimes people don't realize, but uh, using a different output format, like ping or JPEG or whatever, oh, anything else, might affect performance quite dramatically because uh, the coding and encoding images is quite CPU intensive. Uh, so, so I've chosen a good format like a no compression, something easy for this. Uh, it wasn't, still wasn't really quite fast enough, so what I did, I overclocked a Raspberry Pi. Yeah, so it's quite, well, Raspberry Pi is quite limited in terms of hardware, right? It's, it's a, my Model B has got a half a gig of RAM, and it runs at 700 megahertz. Uh, so I put it into turbo, turbo mode. Uh, right, so, so let, let's see how, how it works. Yeah, so. This is how it looks like. This is the case my son made for me. Uh, it's got some 
SD card uh, with the operating system. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to plug it in. It's got a direct Ethernet connection. Okay. So lights are flashing. Sounds good. Huh. Where's my bash? Go. <laughs> Uh, I need to turn off the mirroring. It's a live demo. I like doing a live demo. It never work, but uh, bear with me. Well, Justin, I need somebody to help me to get the command line somewhere. <laughs> what? Command space. Okay. No, no. Come on, space. T, we're well, trying to. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, fail. <laughs> Justin, yeah, I need your help. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not a Mac guy. Um, Is it terminal? Yeah, it's terminal. Where's your... Oh. Hey! Right. Now, see if I can type it. <laughs> if I can see that. Uh, okay, so the Raspberry Pi is running. Okay, so... So this is a... Yeah, excellent. Oh. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, let's just do become a root quickly. And so... Uh, Right, so this is just basically to tell the kernel that I want to use an on-demand on governor for, for scaling. And, right. So I go to time rule two. There's a tip, I preload some J malloc. And I just run tile mill. So this is tile mill two, and uh, just running on a Raspberry Pi. You have to wait a bit, a little bit. Yeah, there you go. All right. There you hey, oh, oh. thank you. <laughs> but wait, wait. Uh, so, so basically, what's happening? It's, it's uh, this small thing. It's actually rendering tiles, rendering vector tiles, uh, and just to make sure that you, I'm not cheating. Just let me do something. Well, there you go. Okay, well, that's all for me. And uh, any, any questions? I can preempt some questions if people ask why I'm doing this. It's, well, it's, fu it's fun, and it's a, a very good uh, platform for testing uh, and making, making sure the map makes fast. Well. <laughs> yeah, yes, please. I, uh, what was that? Uh, how Cairo? There's no Cairo. I don't compile Cairo. Yes, I just say I said Cairo. No, when they compile, but uh, it's, it is possible to use a Cairo. This is a, this is AG, AGG rendering, but it, this is in software rendering. It's no, there's no GPU involved. It's, op it's obviously po it's possible to write a much faster rendering if you use a GPU. This Raspberry Pi has got a GPU, but this is just software, and no Cairo. Uh, any any more questions? Yes, please. Right. This is a big, probably a longer story, but uh, I think we had the meetup. Me, Richard Fairhurst, and Richard Coast, and uh, 
a couple other OSM people. We had a meetup in Chalbury, sort of 2006, and we spent a few hours thinking about coming out with these colors and blobby sort of with this design. And then we went to pub, had a few beers, and then that's a, that's a <laughs> <laughs> And somebody called it Teletubby. I'm not sure. It's not my name, by the way. I didn't call it Teletubby, right? <laughs> Any more? Yes, please. Any practical use for the for the Raspberry Pi renderer? Uh, well, I, I'm I'm thinking about it. This is the next step. Uh, I've got some plans for it. Anyway, I, I'm I'm gonna be, I'm I'm gonna try to build a cluster. I'm gonna try to have like uh, maybe five Raspberry Pis. <laughs> uh, well, well, it's it's. <laughs> It might, well, okay, so if you got a big, if you just plug in a USB drive there and put a, well, you probably have to have like 64 gig of, or maybe more, uh, USB drive, and you put some uh, vector tiles for the whole world, so you can have a, that big computer, great size computer with a whole open street map on it. So, there should be, there must be some usage for that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But it's a, fun, it's a fun thing to hack and just play around. I don't know, do you have any more time left? No, I'm sorry, I'm running out of time. But th thank you very much.